Homo sapiens. Homo erectus came before me. He was a completely different species, but he shared many of our characteristics and tastes. And about 300,000 years ago, one of these interesting predecessors of ours picked up a small stone somewhere around here, a little rock, and it reminded him of something. So he took up his early Homo erectus tools and he shaped it a little more, cut into it, and produced the oldest sculpture in the world, the Venus of Berakat Ram. Can you remember uh, the time when you actually found the little statue? Yes, uh, we were working, digging, uh, and a volunteer from England actually came up and he had a paper bag in his hand and on it he wrote Venus and in it there was a little object. We looked into the paper bag, we saw the figurine and uh, we said yes, it is a figurine. What can you tell us about the makers of these things, both the tools and indeed the figurine? Uh, based on the, the Birkat Ram, I can only say that they, they, had a, they were pretty uh, sophisticated in their knowledge, in general knowledge, in their abilities, uh, and particularly in the technological ability, because they were taking flint as raw material and modifying the flint into something that they had a, a, a previous idea of what they're going to make. And they were very successful in making it. How can you be so certain of the dates that you're talking about? The date in Birkat Ram is, it was actually nice because the horizon from which the artifacts uh, were excavated is sandwiched in between two basalt flows. The uppermost basalt flows that seals the, the archaeological site is about a quarter of a million years old. And the lower uh, basalt uh, um, horizon is in the order of 800,000 years old. So in between, you know, this is the, uh, quite a, a good estimation for the time being of when it was excavated. So tell us about the piece itself. How was it made? Probably when the hominids, when the, when the humans uh, roamed around the site, they picked up this uh, little, uh, little pebble. And on this pebble, probably with a, with a flint uh, artifact, they grooved it. And uh, the, the picture is, is what we see or what we imagine. But, uh, but the, in terms of uh, availability of the material, it's all over the area. And they grooved it and shaped it a little bit more and turned it more obviously into a figure of a woman. That's what we, that's, that is uh, some of our interpretations. Other scholars don't see it in the same way. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, arguments in the literature and uh, I mean quite a number of articles and, and books were referring to the phenomenon. Um, I, I'm not very sophisticated. I look at the, the piece of stone and I saw in the piece of stone what, and I said what came into my mind, to my mind, it looked like a figurine. Uh, this, this analogy, in, in, in a way, was heavily criticized by some of the scholars, particularly by, by some of the people who tried to mimic the original piece and uh, um, they conducted many experiments and finally concluded that indeed the grooves and the shaping are artificially made, but they, the analogy to a figurine or to a woman is, is uh, dubious. Other people say, no, it's not dubious, and then that's what we see. I mean, women tend to have breasts and uh, shoulders and, uh, and uh, a neck, etc., and that's why they, they, the analogy is, is okay. That's what we, we look at the symbol and that's what we see. Have you won those arguments? Are, are most scholars in your world convinced now by your position on this? Oh, I don't care at all about what the positions are. I had to react uh, several years after I was uh, viciously attacked. And I think, you know, if, if a, a person wants to see a penguin in this thing, it's okay. Uh, we tend to see a, a woman figurine, but I cannot have arguments about something that uh, is totally theoretical and in each of our minds. Mr. Grant, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>